हेलो एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉडल आई विश टू डिस्कस अबाउट द अप्रॉक्सिमेट एंड अल्टीमेट एनालिसिस ऑफ प्रिंसिपल सॉलिड वेस्ट फ्यूजिंग पॉइंट ऑफ आश एनर्जी कंटेंट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल सॉलिड वेस्ट केमिकल एंड बायोकेमिकल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ म्यूनसिपल सॉलिड वेस्ट एंड देयर सिग्निफिकेंस एंड ऑल्सो यूज ऑफ डिलोंग्स एक्सप्रेशन टू डिटर्मिन द एनर्जी कंटेंट सो एज यू लर्न द कंटेंट यू यू विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द एनालिसिस ऑफ म्यूनसिपल सॉलिड वेस्ट फॉर द डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ chemical characteristics state significance of chemical characteristics devise empirical formula for the municipal solid waste and determine the energy content as a part of chemical and biochemical characterization of municipal solid waste we determine volatile organics fixed carbon and certain elemental configuration by doing ultimate analysis these particular parameters are important in view of defining the chemical composition of the organic matter that is present in municipal solid waste in turn we can define by knowing these particular chemical properties the proper mix of various components of municipal solid waste to achieve suitable c by n ratio in order to have their biological conversion these parameters are very helpful for material as well as energy recovery also this will be important in order to ascertain the toxicity profile which could be emitted in the atmosphere as the solid waste is transformed into refuse derived fuel and as it is used for combustion purposes if we consider the basis of determination of chemical characteristics of a coal like material and if we attempt to apply the similar logic for the solid waste which is to be used as fuel we can go for four types of analysis these are proximate analysis fusing point of ash ultimate analysis and determination of energy content under this particular proximate analysis we further determine these four parts the first one is moisture content usually this moisture content is determined by heating the sample at 105 degree centigrade for 1 hour second in order to determine this volatile matter the sample is further ignited at temperature of 950 degree centigrade this volatile matter is nothing but the compounds that would be converted to the gas during the combustion process as the combustion process is complete still there will be some remainder as well as some residue that is remaining after burning so this residue after burning is nothing but the ash which is representing the part of the fuel which will not be combusted 
were asked some unburned content will be as remainder which is nothing but the fixed carbon as this particular combustion takes place and as this particular fixed carbon as well as ash is remaining it will be further agglomerated it will be getting fused at the typical range of 1100 to 1200 degree centigrade and this will be forming some clinker or slag this particular temperature is termed as fusing point of ash in ultimate analysis we determine carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sulfur content that is present in the municipal solid waste that we have selected as we wish to use this particular solid waste as a fuel it could be emitting these particular halogens in the atmosphere hence even in this particular ultimate analysis these halogens are often included as there is a emission of certain chlorinated compounds during its combustion the fourth category is the determination of the energy content here we wish to determine the heat of the combustion which is released when the solid waste is burned this particular energy content can be expressed under these two categories the first one is higher heat of the combustion which includes heat associated with the vaporization of the water that is formed during the combustion process also the heat associated with such water vaporization may not be considered and such energy content determined is termed as lower heat of combustion as we consider municipal solid waste typically this particular proximate analysis gives moisture content ranging in between 15 to 40% based on the dry mass volatile matter as 40 to 60% the fixed carbon is 5 to 12% and non combustibles and ash could be 15 to 30% certain typical values which are available in the literature are given respectively this particular approximate analysis is done by certain equipment which is proximate analyzer the ultimate analysis can be done by chons analyzer or ultimate analyzer as we determine this particular analysis we will be able to work out this particular chons and the ash content as mentioned here typically the municipal solid waste which is available in india will be getting this caloric value as 10000 to 15000 kJ per kg here as we refer to the typical data of the ultimate analysis 
of these particular combustible components that are present in the municipal solid waste by various sources will be getting considerable variation. Hence, this variation does not allow the generalization of the waste characteristics. Hence, there is an essentiality of site-specific analysis to have the better understanding related with this particular waste. Because this particular typical data that is available in the literature will be using for designing certain activities, say for heat calculation or computation of biogas generation. Hence, we have to be a bit careful. Just for example, here you can see certain paper products. Typically, for paper, we are getting this particular C content 43, hydrogen content 6% based on the dry basis. Here, this particular content is shown to be ranging in between 5 to 9. Also, its respective ash content could be as low as 1.2 and it could be as high as 23%. So, this will lead to the confusion. As well, depending on the regions, depending on the food habits, as you see, this particular first category of the West which is telling us about the food and food products. The values which are typically presented and the values which are shown for the category of the food west are very different. Hence, if someone is using this particular typical data for say working out the biogas, it is quite probable that the results obtained may be misleading. In addition to the analysis that we discussed on the last slide, it is also helpful for the determination of pH, nitrogen, phosphorus as well as potassium. In addition to the total organic carbon, C by N ratio, and also the energy values. In addition to these particular chemical parameters, the data associated with certain biochemical characteristics like carbohydrates, proteins, natural fibers, and lipids is also helpful. There is a need to have the determination of the toxicity profile also, which will be associated with determination of the presence of the heavy metals like cadmium, chromium, mercury, nickel. Also, there could be presence of certain persistent organic pollutants which are resistant to this environmental degradation through chemical, biological or photolytic processes over the period. So the presence of such say for example pesticides is essential to go for certain processing of the waste. Also, we can go for this toxicity characteristic leaching procedure abbreviated as TCLP for ascertaining the toxicity profile of municipal solid waste. 
as we have this particular contents determined, typically it can be presented in the forms that are presented here. As we go for this particular biodegradable fraction of municipal solid waste, we can think of their typical contributions to the municipal solid waste and the percent of such component which is biodegradable. So, the way you see here, as we consider this particular paper, paperboard and such component, around 50% of its content is expected to be biodegradable, whereas there is other content like glass, metal, aluminum non-ferrous metals, plastics, rubber, leather, obviously this content won't be biodegradable at all. Hence, as we wish to have certain biodegradable processes as a part of treatment chain of the municipal solid waste, we have to ascertain what could be the fraction that is biodegradable. Usually, we go for determination of these volatile solids, which are determined by igniting the sample at 550 degrees centigrade as a measure of biodegradability of the organic fraction that is present in the solid waste. However, some material could be highly volatile, but it may not be easily biodegradable. Hence, the use of these particular volatile solids as the indicator parameter could be misleading. However, as we go for this particular empirical relationship, we can work out, estimate the biodegradable fraction based on the volatile solid. The way you see here, this biodegradable fraction is given as 0 0.83 minus 0 0.028 LC. Here, this LC is nothing but the lignin content of these particular volatile solids. We also have to determine the energy value of the solid first. So, this calorific value or energy value is nothing but amount of heat generated from combustion of unit weight of the west which is expressed as kilojoule per kilogram. This value is determined experimentally using the bomb calorimeter in which the heat generated from the combustion of the dry sample is measured at constant temperature of 25 degrees centigrade. Here, as the test temperature is below the boiling point of the water, the combustion water remains in the liquid state. However, during the combustion, the temperature of the combustion gases would be crossing this particular 100 degrees centigrade and hence the water resulting from this particular combustion is in the vapor state. Determining the calorific value of the waste is important 
to determine the potential for recovering the refuse derived fuel from the west and its utilization in certain plants which are adopting west to energy practices the schematic setup that we use for the determination of this particular energy value in the laboratory is shown in this particular sketch also as we are proposing the portion of this particular municipal solid waste to be converted into refuse derived fuel as it is fed to combustion chamber it will be supplied with the oxygen content through this air supply as it is burned it will be generating the heat and that heat will be used subsequently for energy production as it is burned the way we discussed before the waste residue which is remainder needs further to be dealt with and hence well before hard we can refer to some inert residue as well as the respective energy content of the various components that are comprising the municipal solid waste that we are dealing with here the various values associated with these two parameters are presented in this particular table as we consider these particular typical energy contents we can make use of these particular values and we can estimate the energy content of the sample that we are dealing with say for example the sample that we have collected is studied in consideration with the various components and these particular components are observed to be 15% 45% 10% as presented here by mass as we refer to this typical values which are valid for particular region we can work out the energy likely to be produced for each of such components and as we sum this will be able to determine the energy content as discarded so here as you see this total energy is worked out as 14 lakh 74000 kilojoules the sample that we have dealt with is 100 kg hence the energy content as discarded works out to be 14740 kilojoule per kg as we discuss about the physical characterization the waste components can also be considered in view of the moisture it has and we can work out the moisture content so as we work out that particular moisture content it can be deducted from the total mass that is available and accordingly the energy content can also be expressed on dry basis 
as we discussed earlier as west is fed and as it is born it will be providing some residue as a remainder so we have some such say ash content and remainder content so this can also be considered as available percentage and this energy content can be expressed as ash free dry basis please note that expressing this particular energy content simply as a value would be giving exact idea of how that particular energy content is determined is it as discarded basis is it on dry basis or it is on ash free dry basis so as we estimate this particular energy content based on the actual configuration that we experience for a particular site we should mention what are the observations that we had for the configuration of that particular components as well as the expression and approach that we have used in order to express the energy content one of the important consideration related with the municipal solid waste and its further analysis is estimation of organic formula for the waste configuration that we are dealing with so in order to determine this particular empirical formula we follow these steps firstly we derive the ultimate analysis and the moisture content of the various components secondly what are the proper moisture content that we have experienced for the given configuration is converted into the hydrogen and oxygen so this particular hydrogen and oxygen content would be added in the hydrogen and oxygen that is determined through the ultimate analysis and hence we have the revised composition in the next step we determine the molar composition of the west with that CHO and S values and ultimately we normalize their molar ratios. So these steps would be further elaborated by using these particular data. So now you have got the fair idea that we are dealing with this particular waste configuration. As we are dealing with a particular site, the weight masses that are seen is this. As we determine the respective moisture content for each of these particular components, we will be able to work out their dry masses. We will be referring to the literature that is valid for our region. We will consider the respective elemental configuration and we will work out the respective CHO, NS and ash contents. As we determine these particular contents, we can have that reduced to their percentage by mass. Here, for this particular sample, as discarded mass is seen to be 95 kg, dry mass is seen to be 74.1 kg, hence the moisture content works out to be 
9 kg whereas respective ch of ns composition is determined by using this particular typical data so as suggested in step 2 we wish to have this particular moisture content converted into the hydrogen and oxygen so the moisture content is 20.9 kg as it is converted into hydrogen and oxygen it works out to be 2.32 kg and 18.58 kg for hydrogen and oxygen respectively hence this particular hydrogen content and oxygen content will be revised as we have revised this particular hydrogen on oxygen content by taking into account the moisture that is present in the solid dust the respective element CHONS will be changed and hence this will be revised percentage by mass. This is the initial table that we have worked out. The respective molar masses for CHONS are considered here as 12, 1, 16, etc. We have considered their revised masses, so there was no change in carbon, hence it is presented as it is, whereas H was revised to 6.9 as compared to 4.58 and accordingly. So here we can work out their respective sum of moles by taking into account this particular molar mass, which works out to be 2.87, 6 0 0.03, 0 0.03 and 0 0.004 respectively. As we reduce this particular sulfur to unity, in proportion with that, the content of the CHONS can be normalized. Hence, the sum of reduced moles is presented in this particular room. Further, if someone is interested to have this particular n reduced to 1 and accordingly to express the CHO content that is also possible. So here for a given sample this is the organic expression that we have worked out by following these particular steps. This organic expression is further useful for the determination of the energy content, requirement of oxygen for the full combustion, the probable generation of biogas and similar things. So as we move ahead, we will discuss about that approaches. Based on the total energy content, we can also determine the lower heating value as well as higher heating value with different approaches. So here, this higher heating value on discarded basis can be worked out as total energy divided by total discarded mass. Now, if we neglect the total moisture content that is present and if we consider the water vapor likely to be generated during the combustion process, we can work out such content likely to be generated from the net hydrogen that is available in the sample. So by adopting the 
latent heat of vaporization for the water as 2420 kJ per kg. We can work out their respective energy contact. Hence, as we know, in this particular lower heating value, we do not take into the account the heat associated with the vaporization of this particular water. Hence, the higher heating value that we have worked out on discarded basis. From it, we should deduct the heat likely to be generated through this particular net hydrogen. So here it is x times this latent heat. As we divide it by the total mass, we will be getting lower heating value on discarded basis. Similarly, here as we divide this particular total energy by dry mass, the higher heating value can be expressed as dry basis. The way we consider about the determination of lower heating value on discarded basis, it can also be expressed on dry basis if this value is divided by the total dry mass. As such, we can express the heating value as higher heating value. This higher heating value on discarded basis, it can be expressed on dry basis. We can express the lower heating value on discarded basis as well we can express the lower heating value even on dry basis. So, as we have considered the total energy content determined, you may refer to our slide number 11. So, higher heating value on discarded basis by using this particular expression can be worked out as 14740 kJ per kg. The H2O from net hydrogen is worked out as 7.44 kg here. So, in consideration with this, this lower heating value on discarded basis is worked out as 14559.95 kJ per kg. As we take into account the total energy that is generated and as we divide it by the dry mass, this higher heating value on the dry basis can be worked out as here. As the lower heating value is considered on dry basis by making use of this particular expression, it works out to be 19649 kJ per kg. One more approach for determination of higher heating value is use of Delog's expression. So, here there is no need to make use of the energy value related with the, each of the components. But here we take into account the ultimate analysis of a particular sample. So having known C content, H content, O content, S content, we can determine the higher heating value by making use of this particular expression. Wherein C, H, O and S are expressed as their fraction. As you refer to the different literature, this particular expression can be found to be 
slightly different, which is 337C plus 1428 into bracket H minus over 8 plus 95 S. Essentially, both the expressions are one and same with slight change in these particular empirical constants. And here, in this particular expression, C, H, O and S are expressed as their percentage of the mass. So, as we attempted the problem and from its solution, we had worked out these particular revised masses and we have expressed their percentage by mass in the last column. So, as we take into account this C content, H content, O content and S content and as we substitute in this particular Dulong's expression, we work out the higher heating value as 13229 kJ per kg. As you refer to our slide number 16, this higher heating value on discarded basis we have worked out as 14740 kJ per kg. So, here this approach seems to be conservative, but there is not much change as far as the estimation of energy values are concerned. So, after having this particular entire discussion associated with the chemical composition, biochemical composition, the toxicity and the determination of respective parameters, it is worthwhile to just understand the significance of the determination of chemical and biochemical characteristic of mutual solid dust. It helps us to evaluate the alternatives for the processing. For example, if certain content does not have the energy value or if it has the less value, there is no point in going for waste to energy concept. If certain sample does not have the enough biodegradable content or if the biodegradability is less, there is no point in having biological processing in order to have the solid waste managed. Such kind of the data will also be very useful in order to understand the probable behavior of the components of this particular municipal solid waste as it passes through the steps of municipal solid waste management. So as we can estimate that particular behavior well before, we'll be able to have the management effectively done. The rate and product of the decomposition are highly associated with the bacterial activities and hence will be able to decide the efficacy of the process that we wish to have. Say for example, if the pH is not compatible, if the volatile solids are not to the required extent, there is no point in going for biomethanation like option in order to process the waste. These lipids which are present in the form of oil, grease as well as fat are not easily biodegradable. 
also if they are present say as a part of food dust they will be hampering the bacterial activity also at normal temperatures they will be present in the liquid form and hence it could impart the moistness to the soils however these particular contents are not helpful in order to go for biological transformations but as it has higher energy values to the tune of 38000 kilocalorie per kg it will be certainly advantages to how that content in west to energy like option the presence of biochemical parameter like carbohydrate which is nothing but sugar and polymers of the sugar such as starch and cellulose is readily biodegradable however as there is a content of the sugar starch it will attract the flies rodents and even the decomposition or partial decomposition will create the foul smell the determination of the proteins which are composed of these particular amino acids which are organic compounds made of carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen or sulfur as they decompose they form amino acids their partial decomposition leads to formation of the amines causing the odor noises the presence of the natural fibers like cellulose lignin is resistant to the biodegradation however this particular content is highly combustible and hence can be considered in waste to energy chain the presence of the heavy metals interfere with all the biological operations some inert content the residual content which is available over the landfill sites could be having good npk however the toxicity imparted because of these particular heavy metals won't allow that to use as nourishing agent for soil also as it is burned with the other stream of the west as it is transformed into the particulate it will enter into the atmosphere through the gas stream or it may be conglomerated with the ash and such residue so i hope the concepts that we discussed here are well understood thanks for your attention in the next presentation i will discuss about the functional elements of municipal solid waste management so by till then i wish you very happy learning thank you